Hello there, this is Ben with Stu on the Lake. Come on, let's go ahead and jump in. Hey, today we're doing, uh, this is a seahorse um, carousel animal. So I said I was going to do a, a series of birds this year and a series of carousel animals. So this is part one. Uh, probably be able to finish it in two, uh, maybe. But here's uh, taking a look back in the past. So this guy was carved somewhere around uh, 2001, 2003. I, I forgot to look at the signature on the bottom of it. But this is a carousel rooster, uh, a lot larger than uh, we're doing today. And probably through the series, I probably won't do them as quite as large as this. But this is one that I kept uh, when we had the wood carving shop up in Cold Springs, New York, across from West Point. And uh, here's another one. Uh, here's a draft I carved uh, in the middle of the night down in Kosovo. This is one my father-in-law sent the blank out, and uh, we also kept him. So this is going to be uh, part of the tutorial series, and it'll it'll be running uh, along interspersed with the bird series this year. Thought we'd stick to a little more theme this year. So as always. Uh, starts with a chunk of basswood. Uh, here's the piece that I'm going to go take a blank off of. Reference patterns. Uh, didn't necessarily like this one, just kind of wanted to get the layout of, of it. Some of the carousel animals put horses' hooves and horses' heads on the front of these things. Here's a, a one I printed out. Uh, and I, I'm not using these as exact patterns, I'm just using them kind of as in, in reference material. And uh, as you'll see in the middle of this particular video, uh, I didn't do a very good job of visualizing how I laid it out, uh, but I'll show you how I fixed that. So I know I wanted it to be just a little bit bigger. I wanted the head to be in a separate piece because of uh, two reasons. One, the way the grain runs, and two, working with a block big enough to get that head out. It's a terrible waste of wood. If you watch closely, I, I notice in the editing of this one, there's a few shots of, of my mug that you never get to see. Uh, I doubt very seriously I'll do a, a video with me in it. I don't, I don't really care for that sort of stuff. I don't, I don't think you need to see me. But you can see I, I didn't, I elongated this a little bit, made it bigger. And now I'm going crazy freehand. And, and like I said, there's there's a point in the middle of this where this guy um, gets modified. And I'll show you how that goes about. So there's the blank, getting ready to set up the head. Uh, wanted a little bit more of a curve in the front. You know, I'm, I like the curves. Here's another section uh, cut off of that, that uh, basswood chunk. And I had kind of an idea in mind for the head. And uh, I'm really pleased the way the head on this guy came out, or is coming out. So there's what I'm thinking. I got the head cut out, and I'm going to place it off to the side. This is going to be a carousel uh, up on a stand. I'll put a, either a brass or a wooden pole up through him and then his tail will touch on the back part of the base so this will be a finished carving with the painting I, I won't show the painting it's, it's just too painful uh, the, the painting actually would end up probably being as long as the carving when I get done but I'm gonna turn that head out a little bit if you were standing in front of the carousel it would come in from your left and then uh, pass out on your right And there's the tail layout, uh, going to be a saddle, e even at this point right here, I thought that saddle was going to be a little long. I uh, showed you in the bird videos, a, a lot of stuff I'm going to abbreviate in these. Um, a lot of folks aren't new. If you're new to the channel, uh, I, it would be great if, you'd, uh, if it fits what you'd like to see. Subscribe and you can uh, go back and, and pick up some videos. 
and uh, or uh, that'll help you get notified when the new videos come out uh, every week or two weeks so I put this guy's head on uh, with super glue um, in the summertime I, I when it's a little warmer in the studio I start to switch over and use five minute epoxy I've done a little bit of work with the DeWalt and taken some of this down and looking at him at this point it looks like he has a pretty long body in there so probably gonna end up I'm thinking at this point with two saddles but first I want to get the the contour of, of this seahorse going down into there That's a Ramelson bench knife. I, I've had that probably two years, two years and some change. And it just takes a couple of strops to go in there. So now the shape of him starting to come out a little bit. And uh, at this point, I, I'm, I'm not really working from a pattern anymore. I've, I've got an idea of where I want him to go and how I want the flow laid out. And as I always do, I'm putting back in reference lines. I am going to put glass eyes in, in this, and I, I like the shape of it, uh, but I, I keep looking at the back of him and I'm thinking uh, it's going to be a two-seat carousel animal because the saddle's really long, but I, I ignore that till I get to that point. If you've watched the bird videos, you know that uh, I think the head is the most important part, probably. It's the one that gives you all of the expression and lays the, sets the character for the whole thing. So I'm going to spend a, a little bit of time getting the head uh, shaped down. And if I like it, then I'll continue on. If not, um, I would cut that head off and, and redo it. But this one seems to be uh, coming out like I like. And I'm going back and putting those reference lines in again. Always, always re resetting the reference lines. The carver is from, uh, it's a micro carver from uh, PJL Enterprises over there in Minnesota. They're hard to find on the web and once you get on their website, it's a small company. I, I suspect it's still done by one guy. And uh, there was a time when they were readily available. He used to ship those out and uh, a lot of distributors carried them. I, I don't think anybody does anymore. I haven't had any success. Uh, I haven't tried real hard, but I, I'm going to call him one of these days and uh, see if I can't set up some kind of a dealership thing with him. Maybe I can offer these to you. They're going to be in the three, four hundred, hundred dollar range, five hundred dollar range, I suspect, which is is kind of in the mid range of uh, carvers. So I'm coming down, I'm leaving the, the top a little bit square there because I want to I want to cut a, a saddle out of that. And it, it is looking like a two-seater. So some of the old carousels, when you go back and look at them, some of the animals were elongated a little bit. And they would put two saddles on there, or two seats in the saddle. Um, and, and of course you could put two kids on there. Because those of you that have kids or grandkids know sometimes one kid won't go by themselves. Uh, but they will go if their friend or, or brother or sister uh, will get on there with them. I'm going to do a lot more work on the right side of this guy, or put his head to the right, facing out. Uh, at, in the carousel world, they used to call that the romance side. And being a business, and the woodcarvers, some of the fantastic woodcarvers, um, the Mueller's, and uh, Cherney and those folks, if you go and look at carvers. I, I, a while back I talked about some carvers, uh, some of the wood, wood uh, carvers, and, and a lot of them were immigrants. They came from Germany and Italy uh, primarily, hung around the uh, Philadelphia, New York area. And that's what they did for a living. So they, they were truly artists, but in addition to that, they were a business. It was like calling an electrician uh, to come in and work. 
So they got up every morning, uh, like a lot of us do, uh, if, if we don't have anything better to do and go out and carve, we treat it as a, um, a hobby in an art form, an old art form that we're keeping alive. Well, these guys, that, that was their living. So they came in, pulled their chisels out, sharpened them up, did their thing, and then they carved something. And the idea was production. So when you're doing production, one thing you don't do is excessive work. In other words, you're not going to go out of your way to carve on the bottom of a drawer. So you hear a lot of, uh, or I have heard over the years, and even adopted it myself to some degree, you'll hear a, a cabinet maker or someone who's making a cabinet out in their garage, and you'll see them sanding the bottom side of a drawer and making the seam all smooth and pretty. And the standard is someone asking, well, why are you gonna do, why are you doing that? No one's gonna see that. And uh, the person looks at him kind of miffed and says, well, I know it's there, therefore I have to fix it. These guys didn't think that way. Uh, so they carved the romance side, which would be the outer portion. And the back side was left not rough, but they didn't go out of their way to put all the fancy little details on it. It had the shape, it had uh, practical function on it, but they, they didn't put the roses and the, the um, ribbons and, and all that sort of stuff on the back. So the back is, is was typically carved a little different than the front. So here I'm laying the tail out on the scroll and I, I wanted one complete curl of the tail. And uh, that's working out good. I, I like the way that's coming up and the, and the tail is gonna have some grooves in it. So initially I, I slapped this in there and started on it. And then I decided that it, it kind of was had the wrong angle going on it. And I'll show you that in just a second here. That's a, a yellow saber burr in, in the slower or older, the 20 year old handpiece. Uh, which is, is says is 30,000 uh, RPM I don't, and the, the blue one which which uh, uh, 332 nd bits are the ones I run in this one because of the collet in there I like the two of them I have the two controllers there one I got for Christmas this was probably three years ago now which is newer this one has been sent back to the factory one time for uh, brushes and uh, bearings in the front even though it didn't necessarily need it. It was just getting a little, a little loose. As I'm, I'm looking at this guy, as I said, a double saddle on it, and I, I didn't really leave enough wood in the center to make a second pommel for that saddle and it was kind of bothering me a little bit and I was I was trying to think if I was gonna glue another block in the center there to make a double pommel the second thing that I'm working at that hump I left in the front behind his neck is, is where the pole is gonna go through uh, the mounting pole and as these are mounted on a carousel uh, they the pole rises up and down on a, on a pretty cool mechanism actually real simple one as it goes around and that gives you the the ride in addition to the calliope music that's going in the background so there's the front of the front saddle on the two-seater then i'm going to go ahead and lay out the back saddle and this will have a couple layers and probably a, a blanket scroll double scroll i'm thinking uh behind the saddle underneath it to hold it up and i, and I haven't really laid that part out but i left it there so here's the front saddle seat and contour it in. These look kind of neat when you, when you, if you do the saddle right on these and you, you paint them correctly and stain them, they'll have little highlights and whatnot, but the, it, it just is kind of neat. There's something about a carousel animal that intrigues people. I, I guess that would represent a good day. You go down to a park that has a carousel. There's uh, quite a few of them uh, still around today, uh, meticulously restored. In a lot of cases, a lot of cases, a lot of them have been, animals have been changed over to fiberglass. Wood doesn't have a tendency to stand up 
well over the years. A lot of these carousels were uh, left out in the winter and nothing happened with them uh, since they were primarily up north. And then just a secondary abuse of uh, a bunch of dwarves getting on them all the time. And uh, they were a work uh, piece, not a um, not necessarily an, an art today. Today a carousel animal, original one restored, you could easily pay a hundred grand for that. So there I'm sitting anybody, I really don't like the, the, the length on this and the double saddle. So here's, uh, here's something that uh, you can get away with. I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, saw him in half and take that section out of the middle just to make him better and immediately I liked it I, it looked better to me the way the form the way it went together so just like I do the heads on these I will uh, put a screw in there and some glue and uh, screw these back together there's the screw getting cut off you can go ahead and peg these with a dowel or you're a woodcarver why why pay money for a dowel take and, and, and cut yourself a wooden peg if you don't, I, I like the screw because it puts a little pressure on it and uh, it gives it a mechanical uh, hold. A lot of times these, this glue, if you uh, have the, the pleasure of keeping these pieces around for 20 or 30 years, you'll notice that over time the glue has a tendency to deteriorate. Wood moves in the winter and the summer and uh, the rooster was glued up in several pieces. Well, he, you can see the cracks in that. Uh, in the winter time and in the summertime, it, the wood swells back up uh, from the when the heat goes off in the house and the, the crack closes up, just like all, all wooden furniture does. So if you build this in several pieces, there is a point in the future where um, those joints will show. So you ha they have to be well designed. Uh, but I, I think that's part of the beauty of these pieces when, when you you know it's old. You know it's a hundred years old as the wood shrinks you can see the cracks and, and that sort of stuff in it so now that i got rid of that problematic uh long lanky look in the middle there that i, I really wasn't liking um that's the beauty of all of this as bob ross used to say you, know, you can make it whatever you see in it so if you don't like the way it's looking change it uh, of course you'll get some differing opinions on that if someone were to watch what you're doing uh, like maybe you guys and say I'd have left that thing alone um, that's that's just the nature of, of making the choices I am liking his head and I'm leaving his stout and his, uh, uh, the, his uh, mouth and his nose there I haven't at this point made a decision I'm, I'm trying to think if I want to put a grin in there and they have the mouth delineated in or just have it be a funnel uh, on the end there I do have a lot more of the carving done he at the time of this he is he is not com not completely finished um, where where he's at is what I showed you in the beginning of this and then the end there and I, I, tr I stopped this right around 25 minutes I'm trying to keep keep these under 30 a couple of the other teaching videos I went on for uh, pretty close to an hour and that might be a little excessive my glass eyes are starting to uh, dwindle down and I, I need to put another order in I, I order these probably once a year and I'll order a couple hundred dollars worth of eyes I order them from Tohican uh, glass eyes and Tohican is a taxidermy company that makes uh, animal eyes some of those animal eyes are 40 or 50 bucks you can get if you're carving snakes uh, you can get snake eyes because they look a little different you can get owl eyes if you're doing competition pieces or just want them to look a little more realistic you can uh, look up on the web somebody has gone through the trouble and expense uh, for example, uh, a common loon, you can look on there and they'll tell you what the eyes are. 12 to 14 millimeter um, 
red, brown, hazel. They come in every different color and every different pupil shape. You can get bear eyes on there. You can get cougar eyes, uh, bobcat, you get the idea, and cat's eyes, that sort of thing. But uh, I just order an assortment, and I tend to order uh, the, the basic glass eyes. Uh, I don't know how to describe this when you go through the channel. You'll be, or If you go there and look at glass eyes on Tohican, you'll be overwhelmed. And I tend to, to use a professional grade uh, standard eye with a spherical design in there. So it, I got it down to a brown and a red. I, I like the red. Uh, the red seems to be working good for me, and that's about the size. That's probably a 12 millimeter, if I were to guess. So I've got a little work to do around the face or the forehead, the eye socket there, before I put that eye in. And uh, right at that point, he's just set in there. He's not, it's actually not put in yet. It's just sitting in the in the pocket that I did. Actually, I might have lied to you, uh, but I, I, I'm gonna stay away from that eye and try not to tag it with the um, the burrs because they it is glass and it, it will um, scratch. If you happen to scratch one of those, you can. I've said this a thousand times. You can take some clear fingernail polish or clear lacquer and put a drop on there. Uh, it does compromise the eye a little bit, but it takes away the the part that, that you can obviously see because it, it doesn't reflect correctly. So there's what I'm thinking uh, that I'm going to carve down. And then this guy in the second video, you will get um, the bridle straps, for lack of better reference, that I'm going to put on there. So you see, I got the eye socket set in. I put the eye in, looked at it. Now I'm doing the stuff that around the eye that I would be able, that I would probably tag with the burr, and this is this is a little sapphire bit, a smaller one, a, or a ruby probably. And I'm setting the eye sockets down in there. So didn't show you the tube as always, uh, like I, I oftentimes do. That's quick wood epoxy. It's a two-part epoxy in a tube. You cut off a section of it. That's why I like it. Uh, I always keep one that's working and one that's sitting off on the side. Uh, nothing more annoying than getting ready to put an eye in uh, and, and not having the right material. So on this, this character here, um, being on the teaching side, you can see that I, I'm almost always using, if you go back and look at those other videos, and again, I would entice you to subscribe. It certainly helps out the channel. This I'm gonna show you something in, in a second here, up close and personal. I set the eyes in, the back of my knife has the uh, tip of it, that's a homemade knife. It has a flat spot with a little bit of a concave and I use that to set the eyes. So here I push the eye in a little bit, the epoxy squeezes out around it. Now, here's the up close and personal. Uh, just like on a lot of the decoys, you see that little rolled over rim that, that I'm, I'm leaving there? I will leave that portion, uh, but that's how I do it. Uh, I'll push that out a little bit and then round that over. Now, if that had been a decoy, I would put some, some feather curves in there instead of leaving that completely round. So I like the shape of him. I like the way his tail uh, is flowing. And here's where we're going to leave this uh, second, this first video. I started putting the scales in. You can see I put the bridle on there, and that's going to come in the second video and then the finish and all that good sort of stuff. And then there's an interesting stuff that happened with this spout there. You'll notice that's a different color. But uh, subscribe, like, comment, and uh, stand by for part two of the first of the Carousel series. Hey, thanks a lot. This has been Ben with Studio on the Lake.